good intelligence and security services. That is not a universal condition in Europe. We're more distant from the battlefields. And, and then, frankly, Savannah, we are a different society. Uh, we assimilate immigrants far better than our European friends do. And so the level of threat here is not zero, but it's not nearly what it was yesterday in Europe or, frankly, is today in Europe. You mentioned the failures of intelligence, and we now know that authorities are looking for the so-called man in white, a person by the name of Najim Lashrawi, who in fact was being sought for the Paris attacks. Does that indicate that there's been a real breakdown here in terms of law enforcement overseas? Well, I mean, obviously there was a failure because the attack took place. It may, it may be a question of limited resources as opposed to anything else right now. Many of the services in, in Europe are small. The Belgian service is, is particularly small. And then, Savannah, I, I have to add, there's been this grand debate over the last several years about the proper role of intelligence collection and individual privacy. And the Europeans have come down very strongly on the side of individual privacy, criticizing the United States. David Ignatius had an interesting column in this morning's post where he now says that the Europeans are turning to the American intelligence leviathan for intelligence product, even though they still object to American intelligence collection. We need to have that conversation over again with our European friends and frankly, I think, make it a little more fact-based than the conversation we had over the last 12 to 24 months. And very quickly, this all is taking place, of course, in the context of a presidential election here. You see proposals, uh, particularly from Donald Trump, saying let's close the borders temporarily to all Muslims. You have, have Ted Cruz coming out saying maybe there should be patrols and securing of, of Muslim neighborhoods. And they say that political correctness, their words, have made us less safe. Do you agree? Well, look, I do think we need to have an adult conversation about the role of Islam and the civil war within Islam. But, but Savannah, the, the main point here is in the United States, we may have radicalized individuals. We do not have radicalized communities. We have it within our ability to create radicalized communities. And some of the rhetoric in the presidential campaign trends us towards that, that great, great problem. General Michael Hayden, good to spend a few minutes with you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. And as I just mentioned, these attacks are reigniting debate in the presidential race over the best ways to protect our country. And as that played out, by the way, voters in three states were heading to the polls on Tuesday, and the results are in. It was a split decision on the Republican side. Donald Trump won big in Arizona. He topped Ted Cruz by more than 20 points. But Cruz took it in Utah, grabbing all 40 of that state's delegates with a commanding victory there. So here's the overall count this morning. Trump with 744 delegates, 468 for Cruz with John Kasich behind. And on the Democratic side, Hillary Clinton took Arizona. Bernie Sanders won the two other states up for grabs. That's Utah and Idaho. So now let's look at the Democrats, delegates, and Clinton leads. 1637 to Bernie Sanders, 928. As we mentioned, all of the candidates have had a lot to say about these attacks in Brussels, national security, and how to best deal with the terror. This is Stan J. Catterbone, Advanced Media Group, WWWAMG, Global Entertainment Group. Dot com. It's 7.20 a.m. Wednesday, March 23rd, 2016. The interview was with Michael Hayden. He's the former director of the NSA and CIA, and he was remarking on yesterday's terror attack in Belgium.